I didn't talk much today. I just uh, went to work on the clay. I set up my GoPro. What I'm doing is just uh, creating the uh, moccasins on the bottom here and uh, the well, I truly hope you're enjoying this video uh, during this speeded up version of uh, my sculpting. Uh, if you would like to uh, learn a little bit more about my instructional DVDs uh, of which I've got uh, probably a good 50 years of experience packed into these DVDs. Um, little tricks, little things you can do uh, in your sculpting. Please check out uh, the link in the video description below this video. Also, if you enjoy this video or my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and then click on the uh, follow uh, button in the subscription all right back to the video I'm just preparing the leg for uh, the fringe, which is going to come later. And, uh, here I'm making the top of the moccasin. And I want to make the, both uh, tops the same width. So I just took a uh, measure of the other one with my calipers and made sure that the uh, flap isn't any bigger than the other flap on the other moccasin, that is. I'm starting the uh, leather part, part of the bottom legging. Um, the leggings were made with uh, one deer hide or elk hide, whatever animal they decided to use, and they would uh, wrap it around their leg with a seam on the outside of the leg. And down at the bottom would be a loose flap that would sometimes drag on the ground and that's in the older style, uh, sort of uh, pre-1850, around that period. And they started making a cuff on the bottom uh, later on in the century. I I'm just guessing on that because I'm going by what I've seen as far as my research and stuff like that. Uh, as a gentleman I hire all the time to uh, pose for me and he's, he's a big authority on it and he could certainly tell you a lot better history on clothing than I can. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm uh, gonna make some fringe the way I do that is I use this pasta machine. Now this doesn't work all the time. I mean you can't use this kind of pot uh, fringe for whoops, wrong one. For a real small sculpture, but uh, 
certainly when you get up to the 20 inch area you can use this so you just very very slowly put it through and it can't be too hot and it can't be too cool the clay or else it won't work and then once uh, I get that I uh, put it through the uh, spaghetti roller and it comes out like this which is uh, what you need for fringe. I'll bring it up here and uh, I want to trim it at the top and I'll bring it down. Now you have to remember when you're doing this you have to work the fringe in a way that it will look like fringe but uh, will be castable because right now if you let it hang out loosely with big gaps in the fringe it won't work because the foundry won't be able to make a mold of it so you just got to be thoughtful of uh, the mold making process so I'm bringing the fringe around to the front Pressing any fringes on the uh, moccasin down. Alright, we'll just keep doing that until this whole leg is covered in fringe. So I keep uh, going to the pasta maker and uh, keep making the fringe and I keep adding it onto the legging. The one thing you got to be careful of though is because this uh, fringe is like spaghetti. You don't want to have it hanging loose like spaghetti with a bunch of gaps between each fringe. You want to compact them together uh, if you're going to cast it in bronze. And even if you aren't going to cast it in bronze, uh, if you're doing this in... Well, I don't know if you can run ceramic clay through a pasta machine. I've never tried it. Anyway, um, for casting purposes, you compact it and try to make it... Uh, look like loose fringe without actually having it be loose fringe and uh, you know sculpting is all a, 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 an illusion anyway and so all you're doing is building the illusion uh, and not uh, creating something that's going to be impossible to reproduce Now I started up on the uh, upper seam uh, where the fringe comes down on top of the leg and uh, I put the first batch of fringe over the uh, front of the leg. This batch I'm going to put going over the back of the uh, cap of the uh, warrior uh, on his leg because the wind is kind of pushing it a little bit. And I also kind of like to have that leg exposed and it makes a nice design 
to have it going behind the lake instead of down in front of the lake. Now is this lighter fluid. I want to get this out of the way first. Anyway, I'm gonna take this lighter fluid and put it on this brush. And then using the brush, I'm gonna smooth out the uh, fringe a little bit and also blend in the uh, heavy creases in it. Now this will blend some of the where this does it takes out the roughness of uh, the clay that has gone through the uh, pasta machine. Now because this is a couple of skins that are uh, just wrapped around his leg, uh, there would be a flap of uh, and this would be an uneven piece of skin. Going underneath the, the shirt there. Now since this is the skin underneath the other skin, it's not necessary to be too clean on that. Just adds a little bit more to the eye appeal to put the detail in. back of the leg it would be the same way. We wrap around the uh, leg and this would be a bare butt here. It just looks more powerful once you start building up the small things. The accumulation of small things is what makes the whole look so dang good. It's like building a model airplane. You start out with a small part here and there and eventually you get a model airplane. Alright, good night everybody and have a pleasant night. And I'll see you uh, maybe tomorrow. I've got to go to Bozeman sometime again this week. Just not sure what day.
ない。